Hello, my name is Molly Giannis with Echolocity, and today I wanted to speak just briefly about our Microsoft 365 and Microsoft offerings. So the mission of Microsoft is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. I love the focus on potential and individuals as well as organizations. At Echolocity, our mission is to help teams get the most value from their work. So our mission used to talk about return on investment, but really what we're trying to do is help teams find their flow so that they can do their best work uh, with less frustration. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about what we keep hearing about for Microsoft, both for small businesses as well as our larger businesses. And that is that there's so many apps, right? So while we might be familiar with Outlook and Word and, and Teams, and those are kind of their most well-known, there's all of these other components as well. So Excel and PowerPoint, the Office Suite, very familiar. But these have these other apps as well, anywhere from SharePoint, right? And SharePoint lists and project and planner, so more of the task management. They have some of their process flow and forms and things like that and their video capabilities. And then you have kind of their power platform, more of their data analytics and, and low code apps and things like that. And they have some of these kind of smaller apps specifically for booking appointments and things like that. And they have some of their newer apps like Loop that are act as a portal in a way to kind of get all this information together and be able to collaborate and edit it from multiple locations. And let's not even talk about the fact that they're releasing Copilot and AI and all of this functionality within a lot of these other apps. And if you're like most of our clients and teams, it feels a little bit overwhelming. How do you know what to use when? So it feels like this super powerful set of tools, but it's also kind of overwhelming and they're always rolling out new features and new things. And sometimes it can feel very disconnected as well. So where does Echo come in there? Why are there so many apps? That's what are we hear the most from our teams, which is just that like, okay, we got Microsoft. And then they also have tools, other tools outside of Microsoft, whether they're work management tools or project management tools or analytics and things like that. And the, the biggest question is, is why are there so many apps? So I like to use the example of a kitchen, right? A kitchen has lots of different tools, right? Anywhere from your silverware and plates to your knives for chopping vegetables, from your containers in your refrigerator. Um, everyone has kind of their own set of tools and they some of them use uh, very specific tools, right? So they might have a, a garlic chopper or a pasta maker, whereas other people might only keep the basics. Um, it's something that actually my husband and I argue about too, which is just that there's only so much counter space. So what are those tools that we're going to have on the counter and at our fingertips and the easiest way? So I like to talk about the Microsoft ecosystem of apps in the same way as a kitchen, right? There's a reason that you have lots of different types of tools. They each have a specific purpose, but the ones that you use most frequently, the ones that you're most comfortable with, the one that everyone has are those apps that you wanna keep at your fingertips. And those other ones can go in the bottom drawer and or maybe when you're cleaning out, you don't need that, that garlic press or something like that because you've only used it once. So those are the type of things to think about um, in the same way with Microsoft. Now, I don't know about you, but I hate dirty dishes. And so people that cook and they use every single imaginable tool and they don't keep it clean, right? So maybe they just like build another tracker or another thing over here without ever cleaning the ones that already exist. It feels overwhelming. And honestly, I'm less likely to bake or to cook if I have a sink full of dishes. So that's something really important as we think about how to get the most value from this really powerful platform and all the different tools. So in this case, I'm gonna talk about Sally, right? So this is Sally and Sally might approach her Microsoft ecosystem in, in a couple of different ways. Um, maybe the most common is their email. 
So um, starting with your email and seeing what's come in, and some people like zero email, zero inboxes. I am certainly not one of them, but that's awesome. Other people have really jumped on board with teams with hybrid work and things like that, and they really lean more into uh, chats and channel messages and things like that. And that's their most internal communication. And really, Teams becomes their collaboration platform. And Outlook is more for external people, people that are not within the Teams. Other people do have intranets, or maybe they're starting from a dashboard, especially our executive friends leadership. They're really looking at those kind of metrics to start their day out. Or maybe it is still really in an Excel spreadsheet, so data-oriented. Again, depends on the day and how you start your day and where you start. But Ideally, you have a place and you have a pattern, you have a consistency to where you start and where you go from there. Now, it gets additional complexity, which is it's not just the apps that you have to take into account in terms of how you're working. It also has to do with how you interact and how you get notified of those apps. So whether it's a notification, whether it's a chat, whether it's a call, whether it's a meeting, whether it's an in-person meeting and where you're capturing the data, we just have to be aware that it's not just these apps, it's also how you get pinged on them and how overwhelming and how you manage that. With an inbox, some people have different ways of handling it, right? Some people have like really um, robust uh, workflows, right? Where they can move specific emails into specific boxes. Other people want everything to come into their inbox and they move it when they're done. Some people use flagging, some people use labeling. There's different ways even within your inbox to manage your tasks. But we're not just talking about an inbox anymore or even just Teams. Each of these different Microsoft apps, whether it's Planner, whether it's List, have different notification structures in place. So it's really important that as a team, you're setting a culture, you're setting an expectation about how we interact and how you get notified when you are mentioned or something like that. So I just want to give a single example of a flow or a pattern that might occur with using the Microsoft ecosystem. So for example, you have a Teams meeting, right? And you are capturing the agenda and the action items and the notes and anything that you're bringing into it, links and loop. Um, and maybe you're using a whiteboard for collaboration and or voting or something like that all captured within the loop so that if anyone isn't attending or something like that, they can get that information summarized and know where it is. But loop isn't the end all. You also are taking any of those action items and including them in a planner board so that when I go in and I see my work, I can see all of my tasks across all of the different teams that I'm part of and all the different meetings and everything like that. And as a manager or a leader, I don't want to just see the tasks of an individual. I want to see that roll up and I want to be able to see, okay, who has the most tasks? When are they due? What are past due? What's going on? What are those risks? So I might look at a dashboard or a report from Power BI that's looking across all the different planner boards um, on the team. And because that's not enough, I also want to get um, notified of certain items and or add them to my calendar or something like that. So we have a team right now that has on-site visits and things like that. So we're taking it from planner. We're putting it into Outlook calendar so that there's a single view for the team to say, okay, this person is out on PTO. This person is on-site with a client. This person is you know, doing a training or something like that. And all of this comes back a full cycle into Teams so that any notifications, anything is captured captured here. If I go into search in Teams, I can find all of this information associated with this single meeting and that committee and or project that you're working on. So this is just one flow. But what's so hard with Microsoft training is oftentimes you'll get a training on Teams administration or the functionality of Luke. It's not just the individual features of each of these apps. It's how they play together. It's building patterns in your organization so that people are comfortable understanding and that there's a single source of data that then can be interacted with in the way that people most comfortably interact. And as we know, each person works a little differently. So we need to provide enough structure and enough consistency 
that people know where to find the data and where the single source is, but the way that they interact it and find it is a way that's most natural to them. So this is really important. This is where Echolocity and the Echo team thrives. We love working with champions in the organization to understand what those processes are, what those challenges are between between processes where there ends up being a lag or there's frustration because people aren't trusting the data source and they have to go and actually talk to someone instead to ask if this is accurate. Um, and they end up kind of building all these workarounds. And then you have a big pile of dirty dishes with a bunch of data that's not really um, not really trusted and it, it ends up being not, not utilized. So again, coming back to Echolocity, my name is Molly Giannis, and I'm actually the founder of Echolocity, but I have an amazing team uh, that supports clients um, and teams, honestly, across the U.S., across, uh, we have global clients. Um, we've worked with teams from Fortune 100s, huge global companies, all the way down to small startups. But our mission is to help teams, doesn't matter what size organization or industry, it matters that the team can get the most value from their work. They're not distracted by where it is, what it is, and it interrupts their flow and their ability to do their best work and cause frustration. So we do a variety of different things. We definitely do Microsoft implementations and trainings. Um, we're a little bit different. We're not going to just train on basics of how Loop works, right? We're going to show this is how we connect it. This is way this this interacts. And really, we love working with champions, analysts within the organization that are problem solvers that know their process and can say when there is a problem, hey, we've seen it done with these two or three different tools together to really fully support. We do a lot in the process improvement and automation space. We offer project management services, especially for you know um, mission critical projects. Maybe you don't have that project management skill set in in house or enough on your team, and you're looking to avoid burnout of your key managers. We can come in. We speak software <laughs> vendors and things like that, but we can be an advocate of your team to really be able to empower your team from a project management standpoint. We do strategic planning and workshop facilitation. We love prioritization and understanding the goals and the success metrics so that you can really have a clear vision for your organization on what you're trying to accomplish. We do a lot of that in terms of engagements where we're talking about how we work. So much has rapidly changed um, since 2020 and the and a, a hybrid workforce and all of these new tools, let alone AI. How we work is something that is causing a lot of stress for our workforce and, and our teams, and we need to spend the time to really empower them and make sure that they're able to do their best work and that they feel valued when they're doing it. Um, and then we offer a wide variety of training, adoption, change management services as well. So again, Molly Giannis with Echolocity, and if you are looking for help helping your team find and embrace and maximize their flow, please reach out our website, echolocity.com. Set up a meeting and we can talk about where you guys are at and if we can help. Thanks so much.